what's going on gang we are back with another one i am so happy to be here with you guys now let me tell you i don't know if the world is getting crazier or the videos are getting crazier but when it comes to these videos like i tell y'all every episode the heat is on high okay it's really not much to say but we're gonna go ahead and get into it but first and foremost i gotta say thank you to everybody guys because if it wasn't for you we would not be here so shout out to all the supporters subscribers and everybody that's watching and liking the videos i feel like i've been getting so much support and so much love and that means the world to me guys so thank you so much for being a part of this family but without further ado let's go ahead and get into it to the living you know the end is near check out this death chamber this washing machine they call it aquamation where they liquefy the dead and then dump the remains down the drain to be recycled into the municipal water supply. And so people are drinking it, they're showering in it, they're doing their laundry in it, and this is happening in most states across the country. In most major cities, they're recycling dead people and feeding it to the living. What does that mean exactly? And they're grinding up the bones into powder. They call this calcium phosphate which is going to be used for food processing, undoubtedly. Maybe in your vitamins. And so what are the implications when people start eating dead people, like cannibalism? Is there going to be Kuru running around out there? Mad cow disease? What about in a spiritual sense? What is that like when you're eating and drinking dead people? Of course, they're spraying this on the food supply. Here you guys, I have one question. How are you guys going to recall salmonella, chicken nuggets, or E. coli, lettuce, and things like that, and then go back and feed us humans? And then go back and feed us humans. This girl ate human flesh. I'm going to go throw up. I need a bucket. She was invited in a food show not knowing that she would eat this. It's human flesh. No. That's not okay. No. That's not all right. Because in this show, the guests it's have to guess okay. the secret ingredient. Chef's big reveal might make your stomach turn. This woman was invited to a show called What's in My Mouth, where she had to guess the secret ingredient of the mystery dish. And all she had to do was to taste it. Soon enough, the chef served sausage and she dug right in. It didn't taste suspicious so far until the chef made a shocking reveal. All right, chef, can you tell us the three? Three secret ingredients that might be found in this amazing sausage that you made for us today. The three secret ingredients such a fish liver, human flesh, or shark. And it left everyone speechless, including the host. All right, is this, it, those really the three ingredients? Yeah, yes, a fish liver, human flesh, or shark. Was there really human flesh in there? And is it even legal? The woman was too speechless. And where would you get it if it was human flesh? I hope that's a misunderstanding because I could see that he wanted them to guess what ingredient is in the food, possibly. I wouldn't want it to be any of those ingredients, but I pray that it wasn't that one. And once again, they're desensitizing us. If I don't do this today, I'm gonna do it tomorrow because I've always wanted to try something like this. Because I still don't believe it until I do it. <laughs> so not halal mode recognize any of these drinks you're going to want to watch this video what i'm doing is testing the ph which tells you how acidic or how alkaline something is and all of these are acidic up until we get to essentia and if you're wondering why is it alkaline well let's take a look at the ingredients Essentia has something called sodium bicarbonate in it, which is really just baking soda. And going back to the pH scale, baking soda has a pH of 9. So you can't really tell, but the water is just alkaline because they added baking soda, which you can do at home. If you really want to test if something is actually good for you, use an ORP meter. A positive number means that it's aging you, while a negative number means that it's anti-aging and has antioxidants. This is why when you drink water that is alkalized, your body will start to alkalize very quickly. Now, don't blink. Watch this. 
Pellegrino is so acidic, it tries to go alkaline, but it can't. And we all know things like Gatorade and Sprite are very acidic as well. Now, how many times have we said, oh, I'm just going to have a sip of soda, just one sip, it can't be that bad. Look at how fast it starts to create acidity in your body. And this is watered down Sprite, you guys. I feel bad because sometimes I feel so bad in drinking soda that I actually drink water with it. And I feel like maybe I'm still going to get the hydration with the water while I'm drinking the soda. But look what she just showed. As soon as you drink the soda, whatever else you drink with it is just straight acid now. This is why I will forever drink water that is alkalized. I'm always ready to do little science experiments in my house, in my kitchen. I really want to get an ORP meter. I even want to do them little strips to test out the water. I've seen plenty of those videos, but I still want to do them myself. But the ORP meter is super dope. And it kind of reminds me of grounding. Because I believe when you go outside, before you step into the actual grass to start grounding, I believe that we are charged like positively. And then when we start grounding, it goes into the negatives. And that's why it like pulls out all the toxins from us. So that's kind of giving me the vibe, vibe of that because the water that's charged negatively is good for you. So that's pretty cool. Why do they fill these up? It's silly. It's I'm excited about my staff is excited about you know the internet's excited about it. it's, it's got it's got some good buzz it's a fun car you're a little hey, you sold your soul for a monster you sold your soul to that monster hey, listen, you guys. i can look in the mirror and be happy give me a it's still giving monster the clout even though that was the negative vibe towards monster it's still giving it like almost like a commercial feel to go get monster i know a lot of us are already familiar with this but the monster logo you actually like split it up into three for every line in the m and i don't know if it's in latin or in hebrew i'm really not too sure but supposedly it means 666 so i guess it's the reason that he marked the cross on the monster logo when he stepped into the ring it took 10 years to realize. Let's see. The movie is about a group led by a general. In both of the movies, I guess. Who wants to conquer the new world. To get valuable resources. Okay. The protagonist meets a tribal princess. In both movies. And falls in love with her. Okay. They can also talk to trees, yes. Pocahontas is like one of my favorite movies. So Avatar is basically Pocahontas. That's pretty interesting right Everybody there. knows, everybody felt what I felt. You know what I'm saying? I even said the apology and they, they still with me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I said apology, some of the stuff I was saying was true. So until y'all come up and say, yo, what he was saying, some of that was true, then go ahead with all that. Do you take back any of the anti-Semitic stuff you might have said? Black people can't be anti-Semitic, we are Jew. You I understand what I'm saying? Okay. We are Jew. I think so, so, so cool, so cool. Out. Until you do your facts, until you really do the facts with the fake indoctrination that y'all pull into the schools and all that, you know what I'm saying? We're not following y'all rules. I mean, just like calling death con on Jews and that's like, do you take back any of that sort of more extreme stuff? You, you know said? what? For all the. That's a crazy situation because in regards to the history that we have learned and now the history that is revealing itself, once you know the true history, it's sad to say that you're still going to be looked at as the bad guy for knowing more information and for knowing the truth. So so for people that lack the knowledge, they're going to always want to point a finger and make you the bad guy because they might be uncomfortable with the new revelation of the history that is coming to light. Now, in regards to him speaking on melanated people being the real Jews, I'm trying to figure out, does he actually mean that melanated people are actually the real Israelites, the real Hebrews, or as he says, the real Jews? Because I thought Jew 
was a religion, not actually like a ethnicity or like where the region that you are from. So whoever is educated on that, break it down for us in the comments and let us know this is what we are here for you guys to get that real knowledge. The history of Egypt. After you have shackled and enslaved a people, branded, castrated, lynched, burned, and tortured them, you called them three-fifths of a man, subspecies, an ape, a monkey, and a general inferior creation, how can we then admit that they are our teachers and the ones who gave us civilization? How can we admit that we descended from Greece and from Rome and that Greece and Rome stole everything, everything they knew from Egypt? How to admit that? There's no room in a white supremacist psyche for black contributions to civilization or world progress. This reaches too far into the consciousness of the so-called objective white scholars of academia and their black-skinned counterparts. This is like asking a Nazi to accept the Jewish origins of Nazism and of Hitler, if that were the case. They couldn't accept it if it were true any more than the white supremacists can accept the African origins of civilization, the African origins of Christianity, the African origins of science, the African origins of everything. Philosophy originated in Egypt. Math originated in Egypt. Theology originated in Egypt. Philosophy originated in Egypt. Letters originated in Egypt. Everything started there. They were as ancient to the Romans as the Romans now are to us. And that's what we don't really understand. This is such an interesting subject. Being from another country, everybody is more so represented by the culture that they were born in or that they live in. Not really much by skin tone. I'm not sure. Maybe that's just the part that I'm from. You guys let me know. But I feel like when it comes to the United States, it's merely concentrated on black and white which causes so much confusion because there's so many different skin tones that come from all over the world that's neither here or there at the end of the day i feel like knowledge and truth can only make everyone better and also denying where it came from just highlights the ignorance and almost shows that you feel threatened by a specific group of people. Because if you have this knowledge now, why does it matter where it is coming from? Why don't you speak on the truth or where it comes from? Instead of colonizing and indoctrinating every single person to think in a certain way, why not appreciate everybody's culture? Wherever the resource is coming from, wherever the knowledge is coming from, you need to acknowledge it and just be comfortable and be grateful for it. Where do you guys think this is stemming from? Is this stemming from fear of giving somebody else the acknowledgement? Or do you think it's more of a egotistical thing where people want to be better than other people? Let me know what you guys think. My mother didn't know that King James was king of England. Hmm? She just thought God sent him here to write this. <laughs> she didn't know King James was such a weird, strange homosexual. He hated women so bad he killed his mother and his lover was Buckingham Palace. Who mm -hmm. Buckingham his, his name was, his, his lover was Lord Buckingham, who Buckingham Palace is named after. Oh, come on, y'all. No, hmm? no, no, no way. So where no do you go? Where, 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 where do you go? You know? And so one. Y'all, that cannot be. That's like the hugest secret of all secrets. He's saying that his lover was named Buckingham, so he named it after that. I was just talking about that. I was like, okay, we know there's a lot of different type of Bibles, but who is this King James? Who is this King James man? I've been trying to actually look this up and I keep forgetting, but I'm super interested because I have absolutely zero knowledge on who that is. Because I was thinking the other day, I was like, who gave him the right or for him, his name to be on the Bible? But this just makes me want to get into it even more. Pope Francis opened an important meeting of Catholic bishops today on the future of the church. Revered Pope Francis has recently revealed the evil Antichrist is amongst us, but many don't see it. His claim has been backed by the Holy Bible for centuries. I hope you guys can hear the this. arrival of the Antichrist in several verses and narrations. For decades, researchers have said the Antichrist is a powerful and famous political leader. Others imagine a cunning alien-like being. But what baffles everyone is why Pope Francis suddenly revealed this and what the revelation means for Christians around the world. Let's dive into this <laughs> profound mystery called the Antichrist that has puzzled religious scholars and believers for ages. Pope Francis, 
the globally respected head of the Catholic Church, follows traditional Christian teachings, including those related to eschatology. Backed by his in-depth knowledge about the Antichrist, he has just revealed the Antichrist has arrived and is silently lurking, waiting for the right time to expose itself. While Pope Francis has spoken countless times about the importance of discernment and the battle between good and the Antichrist's evil, his teachings often emphasize issues like social justice, care for the environment, and mercy. He has also linked the concept of the Ten Kings in biblical prophecy with his revelation about the end times and the Antichrist. Besides Pope Francis, several theories also talk about the Antichrist. These include the rich billionaire theory, the religious leader theory, the political leader theory, and the apostate church leader theory. The rich billionaire antichrist theory is a speculative interpretation of biblical prophecies that suggests the antichrist will emerge as a wealthy billionaire, wielding vast economic and political influence. Some proponents of this theory draw connections between certain biblical verses and characteristics commonly associated with the lifestyles of affluent individuals. One key aspect often referenced is the idea that the Antichrist will be a charismatic and influential figure capable of uniting people under a charismatic guise. This aligns with the notion that a wealthy and powerful individual could sway public opinion and amass a following. It's essential to approach these interpretations cautiously as biblical prophecy is inherently open to diverse interpretations, and the notion of a wealthy antichrist is just one among many. A verse often cited in discussions about the antichrist is found in the book of Revelation, specifically Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 18, where it says that the wealthy billionaire will force everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and enslaved person, to receive a mark on his right hand or his forehead so that no one could do anything unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. The Bible mentions that this calls for wisdom, so if anyone has insight, he needs to remember the number of the beast, which is mm -hmm. 666. Interpreters of this verse may emphasize the economic control aspect of this passage, linking it to the potential influence a wealthy figure could exert over global commerce and trade. When examining the rich billionaire antichrist theory, some proponents point to various biblical passages that, when interpreted in a specific way, align with the characteristics of a wealthy and influential individual taking on the role of the antichrist. In addition to Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 18, citing this theory, other verses about the Antichrist focus on the idea that the Antichrist will seek to change established norms and laws, potentially using their wealth and influence to reshape societal structures. Many scholars and religious authorities caution against overly specific identifications of the Antichrist and emphasize apocalyptic literature's symbolic and metaphorical nature. The second Antichrist theory is the concept of the Antichrist as a religious leader. It is a fascinating and complex aspect of eschatology that has led many to distrust religious leaders. Biblical verses and interpretations contribute to the theory of a spiritual leader embodying the Antichrist. In 2 Thessalonians verses 3 to 4, the Apostle Paul, in his second letter to the Thessalonians, discusses the coming of the man of lawlessness or the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of evil tendencies. The Apostle John warns again in 1 John chapter 2 verses 18 to point to a single figure. They contribute to the broader understanding of antichrists in the plural, fostering the idea that the antichrist could be a charismatic figure leading people away from traditional Christian beliefs. In Jesus Christ's discourse on the end times in Matthew 24, he warns of false prophets who will perform great signs and wonders, deceiving, if possible, even the elect. One thing I do want to say is that even though this is a confusing situation in regards to and guessing how it's going to manifest itself in our lives and in our society, we need to stay prayed up. And we need to trust that voice, that inner spirit and that discernment inside us. And also we need to stand up and take accountability and make changes now. Because a lot of these laws that I'm seeing coming to effect are reflecting this very much so. 
a lot of people are brushing this off, but slowly and surely, this is how it starts. If we do not do anything about it or we do not say anything about it, we are consenting to state that these things are okay. Go to medical school. I did not go to medical school. I'm sorry. I did not go to medical school. That's what I thought. Why do you think you or anyone else at Twitter had the medical expertise to censor a doctor's expert opinion? Our policies regarding COVID were designed to protect individuals. We were seeing you guys censored Harvard-educated doctors, Stanford-educated doctors, doctors that are educated in the best places in the world, and you silenced those voices. Did the U.S. government ever contact you or anyone at Twitter to pressure Twitter to moderate or censor certain tweets? Yes or no? We received legal demands to remove content from the platform from the U.S. government and governments all around the world. Thank God for Matt Taibbi. Thank God for Elon Musk for allowing to show us in the world that, that Twitter was basically a subsidiary of the FBI. Man, Prince had Wow. I got to choose my words wisely because the last video before it, it started premiering and posted, it automatically got swiped and taken down by YouTube. When I tell you guys that I had to take this test to get this strike off my channel and in this test, they are manipulating all of us to the core. I don't even think we understand and comprehend. They are on it. They are on it, you guys. They are making decisions for us left and right. And if you speak against it, you will have a metaphorical hand that covers your mouth. Had it coming. The devil came and collected. This had it coming. The devil came and collected. What was he collecting? His, what he signed? What did they? What did they sign over? Oh, so you saying the prince signed a? I'm yeah. not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. I'm telling you facts. Okay. I'm not saying. I'm, t I'm. I'm telling you facts. I'm telling you straight <laughs> facts. He knew what he was doing when he was pacing. Pace. He he knows some stuff. A puppet, and we don't know who the fuck's running it. It's all now. puppeteers. Yeah. I know it's running it. It's the Rockefeller Foundation. It's the motherfucking FCC. It's the motherfucking niggas. The all the left. Cause he sound like Sada Baby so bad. It just making me. It's just giving me like Sada Baby vibes. Letter system, letters, nigga. CIA, FBI, CA, D -D -D -D, and motherfucking World Health Organization. All them WHOs, nigga. This nigga, the motherfuckers giving the shots that you don't need a shot. It wasn't nothing but the goddamn flu, y'all. Hey, they didn't trick motherfuckers through the media, me to ya, me to ya, media, television programming. They telling you visually the program. They name shit exactly what it is. Now, they programmed us with the news. Get your shot, get your shot. You gotta get the shot. Please get your shot, get your shot. Nigga, we gonna get you a hamburger if you get the shot. Free fries with a shot. Who does this? Who does this? Who does this? I'm going into crazy conspiracy. I don't have to say much. He already said it. No, when he said media, me to ya, media, that was crazy. Seriously, but look at Kobe Bryant, right? When his helicopter crashed, just crazy to think about. He was actually in the middle of a lawsuit. He was about to start to testify against the supplement brand that he had partnered with because they had found traces of methamphetamines inside the pre-workouts just to hook motherfuckers, right? So he died. But I don't know if he died for that. Who knows, right? Maybe the 20-year pilot just lost experience that one day. It just made no sense. But they're poisoning your food not only to fuck you, but also to keep you in the rat race of addiction. Do they not have people in a chokehold? In a choke hold. How you feel about this? I'm doing fine. Even better now you're here. All right, give me a look over here, Usher. Give me that great smile here. Give me that Super Bowl. Give me that Super Bowl smile, Usher. Give me that Super Bowl smile. You got more money on that necklace than I got my house right here. Let me see, Usher. Usher, give me a look right here. So y'all telling me that Uncle Cat Williams just told everybody what he said about the dresses and what he said about the humiliation thing, and then Uncle Usher walked into the room. With a skirt on. Under the category clout, Uncle Usher said, anything you can do, I can do better. Marble Cat. He asked me to get in the car with him in his Rolls Royce, to be exact. And I was like, no, it's her birthday. I got to go. Who knows what would have happened to me? Was that even Cat? It's the decisions that we make. It's who we, who we choose to let in, bro. Just because somebody wearing that skin, that don't mean that's them is what I'm saying to you. And they'll lure you in and it's called infiltration, bro. They'll lure you in just to get close to you. They'll wear your mama's skin, bro. Your best friend's skin, bro, just to get close to you. As soon as you slip up. Now, I know there's a lot of things in regards to shape shifting, but there's also a lot in regards to the silicone masks that they put on. So what do you guys think that he was talking about? Because obviously I know shape shifting will probably look way more realer. I, I don't know. With the silicone masks, I don't believe that. I can't I can't imagine it looking so realistic.
got a nice little community going. Yeah, I've got my voice is going to be happy. And as you can see, uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? First off, I don't know how many people this video is going to reach, so begin to check to watch this video. Share this video out to everybody that you know. Uh, using sage is demonic. Now, a lot of people are under the sage that when you burn sage around the house, that is getting rid of demonic spirits. But as you can see in this video, this lady was burning sage and literally pots and pans started flying off the ground. Why did this literally happen in this video? The reason why it happened is because when you're burning sage, you're allowing demonic spirits to come into your life and to your home where you're burning the sage at. Stop burning sage. If you want to get rid of demonic spirits, you call on the name of Jesus. Calling on the name of Jesus is the only way to get rid of demonic spirits, not burning sage, not using crystals, not wearing evil eyes. Listen, when I tell y'all at my house with the things that I have experienced, I have sage, I have the Bible, I have holy water, I got all of that stuff, okay? This is my thing. What is so special about sage in regards to it bringing in demonic spirits? Like, why sage, okay? Where, is, where does the line cross? So, can people burn incense? Can people burn candles? Why is it the sage that is demonic? That's what I'm trying to understand. You guys, let me know where you're at with the sage stuff. There's a powerful connection between the dollar and Taco Bell. Because it unlocks a world of 20 decadent menu items from breakfast to late night for just a dollar each. 20 items for a dollar. 20 steps on the pyramid. This, this is not real. This is not a real commercial. Who made this? You can't even go to the dollar store and get 20 items for $20. So I know damn well y'all better not get no food that's $20 for 20 items. Because what are you eating? I'm going to tell you guys what y'all eating. I'll take this I'll take this whole compilation back to the first and the second video where they talking about human meat. That's what you're eating. And then on top of that, when he mentioned if they don't give you the shot, they'll give you a hamburger. That's what they're talking about. Who's really behind this? Is it the Illuminati or the Bell Illuminati? Experience the power of the dollar at Taco Bell. Finally see it. It doesn't say sun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. It doesn't say sun. It doesn't say sun. So simple but so important. Look at this can. This is an example of what we see in products every single day. Whatever they tell us it is, that's what we think it is. That's what it registers and we just go ahead and believe it instead of looking with all the eyes that we have and thinking for ourselves. Now look, it looks like it says Sunkiss, right? But every single individual letter is individual. It's written out fully except the U after the S where it's connected to the N that you becomes an I. So what does it really say? It says sin kiss. So don't be so naive. Re like, just look. And I actually didn't know this until this video. So I'm in the same boat. Guys, with that being said, we are at the end of the compilation. I want to say thank you so much for joining me today. And like I stated at the beginning, you when it comes to these videos, the heat is on high. There's just so much crazy information coming in. Once again, thank you so much for supporting this channel. Let's keep growing our family. And for anybody that is new and you want to join, all you got to do is subscribe, like the video, show us some love, and make sure you hit that notification bell down below so you know every time a new video is released. But for now, guys, that is it. That is all. Be good and do right. And I will catch you on the next one.